for duty as a troop transport is the fighting aircraft carrier Monterey. In her new role, she will bring back veterans of the European War. Another great carrier, the 45,000-ton Franklin D. Roosevelt, passes under New York's Brooklyn Bridge, leaving her construction berth at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. After final fitting, she will take on 115 planes and 600 men for her Caribbean shakedown cruise. A great memorial for a great American. At Fort Getty in the United States, German prisoners attend special classes to fit them for leadership in their own country. The Gestapo, they learn, is out, along with other fascist institutions in the reconstruction of Germany. Histories and textbooks on democracy are studied under noted teachers like Colonel T.B. Smith, former congressman. The faces of the student prisoners are not photographed. Many had been imprisoned in Germany as anti-Nazis. Languages, government, finance, and public safety are part of the course, which was ordered by General Eisenhower. Several thousand Germans, all volunteers, will be taught here. Upon graduation, they are qualified to return to Germany for assignment by the military government in rebuilding their nation along democratic lines. Scaffolding rises to the very top of the spire of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. The masonry is being renovated and repaired, and the camera catches unusual scenes as work begins. At the top, stone workers are on the job, 330 feet above the traffic on the streets below. Strong nerves and sure footing are required for a stroll like this, but a steeplejack is right at home. buildings are under heavy guard in Rio de Janeiro as the Brazilian capital becomes the scene of an abrupt governmental change. In pictures just released, Brazilian army troops guard the presidential palace as tension grows. Getulio Vargas, after 15 years, resigns as president. Vargas prepares to leave the palace, a private citizen. Crowds await the arrival of Jose Linares, who as Brazil's chief justice, automatically becomes acting president. Coming elections will determine his successor. Former War Minister Dutra, a presidential candidate, watches and as Linares is sworn in and pledges that the elections will be held. With War Minister Goes Monteiro, who opposed Vargas, Linares will guide Brazil in the interim. Clement Attlee, Prime Minister of Great Britain, is cheered by the United States Congress. Mr. Attlee speaks of the problems confronting Britain and the United States in the world today. Today, the United States stands out as the mightiest power on earth. And yet America is a threat to no one. All know that she will never use her power for selfish aims or territorial aggrandizement in the future any more than she has done in the past. But in the light of these facts, and in particular, in the light, the terrible light of the atomic bomb, that I've entered into discussion with your president in order we may get together with all the nations of the world and consider what kind of a world it's necessary to have 
if civilization is to endure and if the common man in all lands is to feel secure. Man's material discoveries have outpaced his moral progress. The greatest task that faces us today is to bring home to all people before it is too late that our civilization can only survive by the acceptance and practice in international relations and in our national life of the Christian principle we are all members one of another. After six days of conferences, President Truman with Prime Minister Attlee and Canada's Prime Minister King announces the conclusions reached in their talks on atomic energy. They recommend that a special international commission within the framework of the United Nations be established as soon as possible to provide for the elimination of the use of atomic energy for destructive purposes and to promote its widest use for industrial and humanitarian purposes. For an American hero, Private Gene Atkins is presented with a new farm by United States Secretary of Agriculture Anderson. Atkins' own neighbors and townsfolk, learning of his heroism in the Philippines where he killed 44 Japanese, raised the funds to buy him a 63-acre farm and are building this new house on it. 24-year-old son of poor farmers, Gene married his childhood sweetheart on his return from combat. A plaque commemorates his neighbor's gift. They felt that a hero should come back to a good start in civilian life. A country barbecue climaxes the thank you ceremony. Gene, who was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor by President Truman, now looks forward to a better peacetime life, a reward for his valor. From Japan come new films of top war criminals now awaiting trial. Arriving at Omori Prison is Yankee Abe, notorious secret police chief. He joins Colonel Hashimoto at the left, Yasutaka Ueda, General Kuroda, and General Homa, warlord leaders. The first pictures of Hideki Tojo, Japan's war premier since his suicide attempt, show Tojo fully recovered. But, shunned by his fellow prisoners, he eats alone. Elsewhere in Japan, American soldiers hunt for hidden Japanese wealth. Acting on information that this barnyard contains valuable buried treasure, they uncover a trap door and an underground room filled with ingots of silver, which is promptly seized. An aged Japanese reveals another silver reserve hidden in a barn. Millions of dollars worth of precious metals were concealed by the defeated enemy. Now it is slowly being recovered. In the disarmament of Japan, tanks are demolished. In Malaya, Japanese officers must surrender their swords in double-quick time. British occupying troops enjoy the ceremony. Japanese one-time conquerors inflicted savage humiliation on the allies in Malaya. The British retaliate with a sense of humor. <laughs> 